Hi guys, welcome to what to cook next. In this video, we're gonna make string bean cheese tart. We're still harvesting lots of string beans from the garden. So if you can get your hands on fresh string beans, I recommend that you make this tart. It really is worth it. It's super yummy. Let's get started. I'm gonna be using a, a tart pan. You can also use a casserole dish. I really like the way it looks in a tart pan. So I'm gonna line the pan with the aluminum foil. Now I'm gonna spray some olive oil on the foil just so the breadcrumbs stick to it and then we can coat the bottom with plain breadcrumbs. If you'd like to use seasoned breadcrumbs you can also do that and then you can set this pan aside. To make the tart you need uh, string beans. I washed these and I trimmed the ends. You're also gonna need some milk. I'll be using panko style breadcrumbs. I'm using plain breadcrumbs. Um, this is uh, some pepper and also some salt. I'm using olive oil. You can find um, olive oil in a spray can in a grocery store. Eggs. I'm gonna be using chopped chives and also some chopped parsley. I love using garlic, so lots of garlic. And I'm gonna be using Parmesan cheese and mozzarella cheese and also onion. You can also use combination of red and yellow onion if you don't have yellow onion. To slice the onions, I like to cut them in half and then using a sharp knife, be careful so you don't cut yourself, you can cut the slices. To steam the beans, I like to use a steam plate. This is a metal steam plate, you can also I think get these in silicone form. And then you wanna pour some water on the bottom and then you can get the beans in. I also like to season the beans a little bit with some salt. And I also like to, you can either drizzle some olive oil or spray a light coat of olive oil on top. So now that they are steaming here, you have to watch them that so they don't get super soft. You want them fork tender. And now I'm gonna dump them into ice cold water to stop the cooking process and they're gonna stay nice and green as well. You wanna let them cool until you can handle them and then we can just cut them into about an uh, inch long pieces. No big deal if they are bigger or smaller pieces, it's not a crucial thing in this recipe. So now we're gonna make the um, custard I would say. So you want to mix the milk with the eggs, add all of the cheeses, add all of the herbs. Season it with some salt and pepper. Remember Parmesan cheese is pretty salty just so you don't overdo it with salt. You want to taste it. Now I'm gonna cook the onions. You want to heat up about one tablespoon of olive oil and then you can add the onions. You want to cook these until they are soft and they're getting uh, lightly golden brown. Then you can add the garlic. It's a little difficult to press through that thing. But um, you want to cook the garlic maybe for about 30 seconds or so just so it doesn't burn. And then remove the pan from the heat. Now we can add the custard to the beans. Let the onions cool for a little bit. And then you can also add them to the beans, stir it. Now you can pour the bean mixture into a prepared pan. You can also use a casserole dish. And then to support the pan, like a tart pan that I'm using here, probably for casserole dish you don't have to do that, I like to put it on a baking sheet. Now you want to sprinkle some panko on top and then you can put it into the oven. So as you see, I took it out of the oven, but the panko hasn't gotten any color, so I'm gonna put it on broil for a couple of minutes, just so it's golden brown, like this. And now uh, you have to let it cool until you can handle it, and then you can take it out of the pan. Now what's great about this dish is that you can make it ahead of time. It's great for breakfast, lunch, as a snack, I really really love it. It's super tasty. I hope you like this recipe guys. Don't forget to check out how to make spatzel or flour dumplings or how to make homemade 
butternut squash gnocchi. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you next time. Don't forget to subscribe.